So I've been a witch for 26 years and it was also in my family because obviously your nanny, my mum, mm -hmm. was a witch so she brought me up in a magical world and I've tried to do the same for you and your brother. So when do you think, at what age were you interested in the word witch? I think, well, I, I've always been interested in it because I remember in school I used to tell... <laughs> <laughs> right, Luna. So I obviously initiated you last summer mm -hmm. with our sisterhood. Yeah. And you've been wanting to really step into the word witch and become the witch that you want to be for some time. Mm -hmm. And you're 23. Mm -hmm. So what does, how has that changed you? How, you know, what does the word witch mean to you? Because you're very confident, you do say it, and as yeah, a 23 year old, I, you know, when I was 23, I would not say that. Yeah. So, what does it mean? Well, to I you? used to be such a shy person, and mm -hmm. I had a lot of fears that I would never, ever, ever come across, like get to get over them or anything. Mm -hmm. And last year, after being initiated, I did a lot of things that made me go over those fears and it's made me really confident now um but the word which to me has meant about being the confident woman that I've always wanted to be mm -hmm. um and yeah so it's brought you more confidence <clears throat> yeah 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 okay so oh, obviously I believe all witches do different things I don't think there is a right and wrong and mm. um, yes you can read books and gain information but I always believe that you should take things on that resonate with you personally yeah so what are the typical witty you you think witty things that you really love like crystals or doing yeah like, like candle cold drinks and or... yeah candle magic spell work um tarot um, so I do like celebrating the um, Sabbaths. Sabbaths and stuff, yeah. Mm -hmm. But yeah, definitely crystals. Um, yeah. About the moon? Yeah, the moon. <laughs> yeah, the moon. <laughs> yeah, the moon. <laughs> yeah, the moon. <laughs> what do you like about working with the moon? I, well, I feel like I'm always in sync with whatever the moon the moon and like the meaning behind each moon the is phases. I'm always in sync with that and I mm. always like the day before I'm doing what I can't think of the word what is what the what that moon is meaning for people mm. to be doing I, I always do it like the day before um yeah and I, I really like doing full moon rituals and and new moon rituals because I like to see my goals every every like two weeks or four, mm -hmm. or four weeks or whatever um, do you prefer working with the new moon or the full moon the full moon the full moon yeah why i like to set intentions for the the four weeks up until the, the next mm -hmm. the next full moon mm -hmm. so i'm going to ask you a question um how did you bring magic into our childhood from from not leading, not leading a muggle, muggle oh, parenting. Um, because my mum and dad brought me into a magical childhood. Mm. That's all I've known. Yeah. But I did make a conscious decision of when I became a mum. I really wanted to instill my witty values and magical life into you, and show you that path ahead. Um, obviously, and your brother. And so I brought in, when I was doing, which you can't remember, when I was doing um, a full moon ritual or something like that, just when you were in bed. So during the day, I would maybe come, you know, you'd come with me and we would gather some things for that ritual, which you can't remember. Um, some of the Sabbaths, because I obviously celebrate some of them more mm. than others, yeah. like you all. Yeah. Um, we've always celebrated that, but you've yeah. never noticed the extreme no, of that. No. Um, and obviously Halloween and Easter, you've always done. Well, it's either Beltane or yeah. Yeah. So 
also the summer solstice we would be celebrating it but that's more in like a barbecue yeah family situation so i would bring in the love for nature i'll talk to you about the moon i also explain to you moons with your hormones and periods mm -hmm. and stuff um star signs yeah yeah what else did i do because you've never you've never forced never forced i showed no. you about crystals i just sort of mirrored to you magical things within our home because you really like them like you've always loved crystals yeah so i was just mirrored to you me using them or i would talk about it yeah and it was more of like uh i'm just showing you rather than like you're gonna learn about this yeah mm. yeah and the cacao was something i brought in when i started this more as a business yeah because i wanted it as a tool for my mental health and wellness and then you just literally loved it so well i didn't, I didn't like the first time that i tried it <laughs> <laughs> i didn't like the first time it was really bitter but then when you made it i really liked it hmm. the experience must have been my first that was your first woman's circle yeah that i took you to yeah yeah which one of my friends held so yeah, yeah. That was a full arm experience. That's cacao ceremonial. Ceremonial circle, cacao circle, yeah. But they were doing, um, she was doing trance, like singing. She'd go through different beings, wouldn't she? And yeah. take on that person's voice and would sing different yeah. languages while we lay down. It was yeah. really cool. It was really cool. You were about um, seven or eight. Mm. You started then making potions and stuff like that, which obviously I was thrilled about, but it was more in like a yeah, clay. Yeah, you used to use all your products. <laughs> yeah, so it wasn't, yeah, proper By spell By the way, I still got those now. <laughs> <laughs> Me and your dad found this really beautiful wooden, um, like, mini chest, yeah. which your dad sanded and made rope handles for, and we gave you that to put all of your stuff in it. So magical books and books about witchcraft in a very gentle teenagery kind yeah, of way yeah she bought me well she gave me these um the recipe books and mm. they had it was basically like putting a spell into your cooking and i remember mm. i used to flick through that all the time because there was like rose ice cream in it and i thought well when i'm older i'm gonna make that yeah and then we'd obviously watch practical magic which we've watched over and over yeah. and over together yeah um so you started collecting things into this chest and that was in your room and then my mum made you that beautiful bunny with the pentagram. Yeah, because I was it. having, yeah. I had nightmares for a little while and Nanny made me a rabbit made from velvet that she told me to sit next to on my bedside table mm -hmm. and it, the intention behind it was that it was going to stop bad dreams because I tried like dream catchers and stuff and it didn't work for me. Um, so I still got that now and it has a pentagram on it for me to wear mm -hmm. which i should wear um and yeah she she got me a wand when we went to a spiritual fair and there's some herbs in there that are probably really manky now <laughs> <laughs> but she bought me some herbs that were for good luck she gave me her rune stones mm -hmm. and i think i have a tarot card set in there mm -hmm. as well yeah, so that was your first collection. So that's like a mini altar there. Yeah. You would literally open the lid, get things out, create a little space, and then... And if you're going to give people advice, <clears throat> so maybe a baby witch or something, or somebody's just interested, what would you tell them who's, like, in their 20s of how to start, start this path? I think you do need a little bit of knowledge, but then I've, I have never... Like you, I've never read a book about it. I only look at books for like herbal remedies or um, plants and mm -hmm. stuff like that. Really, but I think you do need. I think you need knowledge. So I think it is good yeah. to like if you if you come from a background where you don't have a generational witch in your family, then I think you should read books about it. Mm -hmm. um, but then I think as well that you should just trust whatever you experience I think that's mm -hmm. like surrendering to what what you what you see and what you hear and in like a meditation type of stuff as well like I think you mm -hmm. should you should trust whatever you experience um and I think journaling is a really good way to start by I think you should 
you need to be able to know who you are truly and deeply and, and record to connect, it. yeah and connect to yourself mm. and I think you need to understand how to reconnect back to yourself very good very good <laughs>